as a church. This is the mission, the reason we exist at home. sweeter than the presence of our Jesus. So let's sing this to him today. How beautiful, how wonderful, Lord, you are our heart's desire. You satisfy, bring us life. Lord, you are all we require. Nothing and no one better. Jesus, we love to know you. You're closer than my own heart. Lord, this breath is yours. It all belongs to you.
it's one thing to sing that song, um, but today I just wanna ask you, are you really hungry? Are you hungry for more of Jesus? It says, revive us now. And to revive means to bring back to life. So today, what's the state of your soul? Do you feel like some things have died? You've grown cold, distant from the Lord? Well, Isaiah 55, six says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. So if we will seek him with all our hearts and return to him, he will breathe new life and he wants to do that today. But it's up to us, we get the choice, will we turn back? And this next song says, sometimes all we can do is just say, hallelujah. Sometimes that's the best we can do, just humble ourselves and say, Lord, we have nothing worthy to bring to a king except our praise. So would you join us today in doing that and seeking him?
generosity made camp possible for 344 kids and students. Out of the attendees, 89 kids came to us without a church home, seeking community and connection. And a total of 250 kids took part in this unforgettable experience. Over at Camp Jacob, our student camp, our staff and volunteers served 94 middle school and high school students these students embarked on a transformative week of camp with 16 decisions made to follow Jesus. Your kindness and your generosity made all of this possible. Together, we're lighting the path for the next generation. Well, hey, Highlands, I want to welcome you to our service today. I realize it looks a little bit different than normal, but here's what I want you to know. We just finished up an entire study through the churches of Revelation, and it was Jesus writing a letter to each of these churches. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the letter that has been written by all of you at all of our locations and those of you that watch on TV and online of what God has done through you over the past year. And I think it's an amazing letter that Jesus has shown up and he has gone above and beyond what we ever dreamed in so many areas of our church. So we're going to highlight several things today. Just buckle up. It's going to be action packed. It's going to be fun. And you're going to be able to see all the things that God's been doing. So first of all, you know, at Highlands, we have a heartbeat to raise up the next generation. I was saved at church camp myself. So it's passionate for me. And we have a couple of camps. We have one that we do with our students and our high school students and middle school called Amplify. This year we're going to change it a bit. James will talk about it. And we also have one for elementary kids that we partner with Windshape and Chick-fil-A to do our Windshape camps. And we're going to do that again this summer. And you guys, through your generosity, through our Difference Maker, you're making a difference in so many kids' lives. So I want you to see the people who help us actually make these things possible at our location. And today on the stage with me, I have Dave Pollard. He is our owner-operator of our local Chick-fil-A down at Exit 7. So you guys in Bluefield and Marion, when you come down this way and you go get some of Heaven's Chicken, this is a guy you can think. It's an amazing place to eat. We love it. We go there all the time. And then we have one of our young people, Kyla, who is with us, who attended Amplify and served at Windshape, and she's going to share a little bit about her experience. And all of you know James. He doesn't need an introduction. So guys, thanks so much for being with us. And Dave, if you don't mind, explain a little bit about Windshape, your passion for it, and what you saw God do through Windshape this past year. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you having me today. Uh, so just a little bit of background on Windshape uh, and where it came from. It actually was started by Truett Cathy, the founder of, of Chick-fil-A back in the 1980s. So they've been doing camp for a long, long time. Um, back in 2012, my wife Hannah and I were living in Missouri uh, with Chick-fil-A and we hosted a Windshape camp there. It was the best, craziest day, uh, week of our, of our lives. And so when we moved here in two, in, later in 2012, the first thing we wanted to do was to get Windshape started back. So uh, we've actually hosted camp for eight years in, in the area. Uh, this summer will be the ninth year of camp, uh, which is super exciting. We had to take a few years off during COVID because things got weird. Uh, but we're super excited to partner with Highlands again uh, this, this summer. Awesome. And can you tell us a little bit about um, where it's going to be this year? And we're moving it off. Uh, last year we added our Bristol location, but this year we're going to we have a new location. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, last summer we hosted a uh, camp at the Bristol location of Highlands, uh, which the, the good news was that 
we outgrew camp the first year. Uh, so, so the facility was maxed out. We had 240 kids uh, there, and, and it was just maxed out, which is a great problem to have. This year, we're super excited to, to actually partner with Virginia High School, who has been gracious enough to allow us to use their facility. Our goal is to have 300-plus kids at camp this summer. Yeah. So when we open up registration for Windshape, guys, get get it done quick get your kids in there quick because it fills up it's the greatest camp ever for your elementary kids and and uh, we've seen so many amazing things and new families come to our church every year because of the experience with wind shape so we're honored to partner with chick-fil-a and we're honored to partner with dave our local owner operator and it's just an amazing camp so uh kyla we're grateful for you and uh, it's always neat to see young folks she's on our worship team too she knows how to praise jesus which is always awesome so tell us a little bit about your experience at amplify and why you decided i need to go ahead and serve at windshape so i got to attend amplify this year and i got to be one of the worship leaders at amplify and Man, it was just an incredible experience from a worship leader's point of view, getting to view down and see all of these students worshiping Jesus and just getting down on their knees and praising. Man, it was just incredible, especially since most of them were middle schoolers that had never had an experience like this before. And just like seeing how God moved and seeing how like, even though none of them had had this encounter with Jesus before, it's like, man, God knew exactly what he was doing and made them feel like they knew exactly what they were doing. And just looking down and seeing every single student with their hands raised, even though they had never done that before. So um, we we heard so many great things from our students at Amplify. Let, Let me ask you, Uh, You went to that experience, and then you saw all these hundreds of kids in our Bristol location at Windshape. What was that experience like for you as uh, you were volunteering to help there, right? Yeah, I got to volunteer for Windshape, and it was a crazy (laughs) crazy week. But, um, man, just, like, seeing how, like, teaching these kids that, you know, like, being a follower of Jesus can be fun, but, you know, there's also, like, things that you have to do and have to learn in order to know about that. Um, but just showing them that, like, being a follower of Christ can be so much fun while also um, getting to teach them the gospel and getting to show them that through, like, games and through all of this other stuff. Awesome. So, Dave, do you have the new date for our Windshape camps this summer? Do you know what date that's going to be? Yeah, the uh, uh, dates for camp this year, it's a little bit different than last year. Uh, it's, it's July 29th through August 2nd. All right, so you got it. You heard it here first, so be sure you put that on your calendar so you can get your kids signed up when we open up registration. So I'm going to move to James, who uh, works on our staff and just has done an incredible job reaching young people in all of our schools, and uh, he's down at our Bristol location. James, can you share a little bit about what, 2024 opportunities we have for kids and students? Yeah, absolutely. So Windshape's a great opportunity for elementary school, for for middle school and high school. We're going to, it's called Centrifuge Camp. It's going to be held at Carson Newman University this year. Um, And it's just going to be amazing. They do an awesome job. We're going to take our students down there. And it's just going to be amazing. The dates are going to be June 10th through 14th. And it's a place where your students get to come and get away from the craziness of life and get to connect with Jesus and their peers. And Centrifuge, they put it on in an amazing way with with so many activities, you stay in the dorm rooms together, you, you, everyone eats together. I mean, it's just, it's an awesome place. And I, just to speak to kind of what Kyla said too, like watching the students come together this past year, because it was really the first year we had an in-person overnight church camp um, since, since COVID. Yeah. And it was just amazing. Like seeing the kids come together, I got to talk to Alex, worship leader, of just watching them all worship and saying, this is what I've been praying for for years, is like watching the, the tough kids who, you know, yell during the message or talk during the messages on Sunday mornings, like to see them with tears pouring down their face, worshiping. And it just makes a, a huge impact. So we're going to be joining them this year. And it's just going to be awesome. Last year, because of what the church gave, we got to send I mean, kids for free to camp. We got to cut the price, I think pretty much in half last year or more. And so... It it was just an amazing, amazing opportunity. And then, like, a good portion of the students who came back from camp 
volunteered at Windshape, who probably had no desire at all to volunteer before, came back and served and are still plugged in, serving in, in kids' ministry and, and plugged in. So it was just an amazing time, and this year is going to be awesome. And so June 10th through 14th, I wanted to make sure I didn't mess those up, but that's where we're going to be. I would definitely go ahead and mark your calendar. I know people are busy with vacations, and summer's very busy, but if there's one place I would say to have your kid at this year, aside from with your family, it would be at camp with us. I think it's going to be awesome. Well, uh, I would just say you have a couple opportunities here, not only Windshape for your elementary kids and then for our middle school and high school students, the opportunity to do something a little different, go to Centrifuge down at Carson Newman, both incredible opportunities. And as you give and you think about giving today, it allows uh, kids' life to be changed forever. So I've always thought, man, I want to give to things like that. And then we need volunteers. So uh, even though we're going to Carson Newman, we still have to have volunteers. It's an amazing opportunity. If you want to take a week off work and go with James, it'll change your life too. And we need tons of op- our volunteers for our Windshape Camp down at Virginia High School this year. And I hope you'll be able to give some time back serving kids in our community. We are passionate, again, about raising up the next generation. So would you give a hand to these folks? It's awesome what God's doing as we make a little transition here. Thanks so much, guys. Now I want you to see what God has been doing through our local community. So when we think about uh, what we do with our Difference Maker offering, we want to raise the next generation up. And then a few years ago, we really felt God calling us to move outside of our buildings and to go and love and serve on our community. So look a little bit this past year of all God was able to do through your efforts in serving our community. Love Week is more than just seven days on a calendar. It's a testament to the power of our church coming together. In just one week, we reached out to four communities with a whopping 68 project opportunities. 726 amazing volunteers signed up to serve, to give, and to love. But our commitment doesn't stop after Love Week. Every week during this year, we're out there making a difference. Feeding the future through our backpack program, we partnered with local schools to nourish hungry minds and stomachs. Through Love Week and beyond, our commitment to our community stands strong. Thank you for being a part of this journey as we reach out to love on our community. Well, again, one of the heartbeats we have at Highlands is to love on our communities. And we have one week that we designate a year called Love Week. This year, it's going to be at the end of July. And it's a week where we ask all of you who come, whether on TV, online, or in person, to give some of your time, a couple hours a week, and go out and take advantage of many opportunities that our campuses bring your way. And this has been a huge win for us. Uh, You know, often we think when we go out and we serve our communities, we're doing something for them. But what we found, it really does something for us. And that's the way God wants, right? Anytime we give, we're the ones who are blessed more than those who we give to. It actually comes back to us. And so uh, I, as we get ready for Love Week, I just want to encourage you, hey, give, give a little bit of your time so that you can serve and love on our communities. We partner with our local schools. Uh, you heard in one of the videos leading up to Difference Maker what we've been able to do down at Van Pelt with uh, our principal there, Jared Rader, and here at Abingdon, our Watauga Elementary School. Those are two uh, local schools that we partner with. And Uh, You guys have gone, you've served, you've loved, and it's made a huge difference in our local schools, and we do that in several other schools in our community. We love helping those who need help with the kids and anything we can offer on the outside of the facilities. We love loving on our schools because we know when we do that, everybody gets better, our communities win. And then one of the things that we do, uh, and we're just giving some snippets today of all the things God's been doing through you guys, but one of the things we do at our Bristol location is that we actually host all the police academy graduations for our entire region. So if you want to go into law enforcement, then you go to the academy and you go for several months of training there. And then when you get finished and you graduate, we bring it over to the church. We offer our facility. And it's an amazing experience. I try to go to every police graduation for a couple of reasons. One, if they pull me over in the future, maybe I've met them at graduation. (laughs) And then secondly, to see all that God does in that graduation. Uh, They are sponsored by their church, their local church. They're given a Bible. 
and they're prayed over. And then their family comes and they're able to celebrate the opportunity of graduation that these law enforcement officers have. So we're, we try to partner with all of our first responders in many different ways, and that's one way that we do that. Another thing we try to do is partner with our community services when there's a need that arises in any of our locations, and we can help with that, whether it be something to celebrate or something to grieve. Uh, we want to be a part of that. And a few weeks ago at our Abingdon location, we partnered with our Abingdon Fire Department who lost one of their young firefighters in the line of duty answering a call. And we were able to host his funeral, Cameron Craig, pray for his family and just give them an opportunity to come and be loved on and hopefully begin a process of healing. One of the main ways and one of the things that's really dear to my heart that Highlands has partnered with for several years now is in the area of adoption and foster care. Uh, those of you who have been at Highlands for a while, you know that we begin to look at some of the giants in our communities that kept them all from being what God wanted them to be. And we waded into the addiction recovery. We have Celebrate Recovery down at our Bristol location on Tuesday nights. But we also realized that with an abundance of addiction, a lot of times there's a need for foster parents because kids are having to be removed from their homes for a while to mom and dad get life back together. And uh, the agency that we partner with the most is an agency called Virginia Kids Belong. And our own Matt Verlander, who leads uh, Virginia Kids Belong for our region, is with me today. Matt, thanks for being with us. We truly do enjoy partnering with you. And uh, could you just sort of help our people know uh, some things that you've seen God do through the partnership that we've had with you this past year? Well, it's a privilege to partner with Highlands as well. Um, thanks for having me here today, Alan. I would say that in the past year especially, uh, this has been a season of, of growth mm -hmm. in really all of the campuses uh, across the region. The Lord has raised up leaders, ministry leaders in, in each campus who have really answered the call to lead a ministry in their communities to wrap around children in foster care, uh, wrap around their foster families. We, we say at, at Virginia's Kids Belong that there are around 18 people identified per child who's in foster care. And so that includes their, their birth family, their foster family, uh, their social workers, and and so those groups are, are the groups that they're identified as as groups that need deserve to be wrapped around. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, Matt. We we love being able to invest in a kid's life that's going through a season of often trauma or loss or grief from being removed from their family. As you look at the next year and our continued partnership with you, what, what opportunities do you think we could actually even do more and better in the days ahead when we look at 2024? Okay, sure. Uh, in, in the child welfare calendar, we, we say there are several uh, key months, and the first month that comes up in, in the calendar year is March, and that is Social Worker Appreciation Month. And there have been really numerous examples of, of how Highlands, in, in, in every community that Highlands is in, has shown appreciation for the social workers. Uh, in, in Bluefield, they've, they've had lunch for them. In Marion, they've provided coffee. In, in Bristol and in Washington County, they have been served coffee and, and lunch. Lunch, and they've been served in the after after hours when the the social workers are staying the night with children who are waiting for a placement. In in May and in and in November, those are the key months for foster care and adoption awareness. And next year, there will be another opportunity for the church to serve children who are waiting for for an adoptive family uh, through our I Belong project. And I Belong project is a uh, project of Virginia's Kids Belong, where we are able to produce uh, professional videos for these children who are still looking for their forever family. Uh, and I'd like to celebrate just for a second, if I can, what, what happened this year, just to, to, to encourage others to get involved in this uh, in 2024. Uh, every child who comes to one of those video shoots receives a bag that has uh, 
several different outfits for them to, mm-hmm. to take home with them, uh, usually a pair of shoes, and then several wish list items that they have asked for. Well, across three of the campuses uh, in 2023, uh, volunteers volunteered to mm-hmm. fill those bags, and, and we got to give those bags to those kids at our video shoot in Withville in August this, this year and just see their, their eyes light up and see them loved on through, the, through those gifts. So I just wanted to celebrate that, but also really promote that as a way to get involved in 2024 too for the next video shoot. Awesome. Well, um, you know, I, I know all of us here at Highlands, we love when we can help a foster child in transition. Uh, and sometimes that's with time. Sometimes that's with uh, an immediate resource need that they have. And a lot of you who give today and give through our Difference Maker offering, you're making a difference in these kids who are going through a a difficult transition. So I just want to thank you. Matt, I want to thank you for the partnership that we have. We look forward to working with you in the years ahead, and we're grateful that you're on board with us. So thanks, Highlands, for all you do, not only in our foster adoption ministry, but all the ways that you love on our communities. It's incredible. You guys are awesome. And today we celebrate how our communities now know that our church is for them. And we desire as a church to see our communities prosper as well. So it's something that we're passionate about uh, here at our church. So thank you guys so much for giving your time and resources to love on our communities. Thanks, Matt. So our third um, service today that we want to look at is uh, what Highlands is doing around the world. And not only has God called us to raise up the next generation and love on our local communities, but we know from the Great Commission that Jesus wants us to take the gospel and to share the gospel literally all over the world to those who have never heard about Jesus. And if you've been at Highlands very long, you know this has been our core. It's been our DNA from the beginning. We've trained over 400 pastor leaders in over a hundred nations around the world. Our goal is to train a pastor leader in every nation in the world. And now we have partnered with 4G3. This is Wahid's ministry to do discipleship because a lot of times the need that is greatest in the churches that are formed internationally is to disciple new believers in Jesus. So I want you to see some videos of not, of course, I wish I could show you all of them. We don't have time, but I want you to see a few videos of some of our world partners partners that are in some trying circumstances, Pastor Vassal in Ukraine, Pastor Joel, uh, obviously uh, uh, leading and pastoring churches in Pakistan, and also Wahid. Wahid is um, our original partner who has so many connections in the Middle East. So th- this is just sort of be back-to-back opportunities of video to share the story of what your investment in their ministries have meant to them. Our G3 conference stands as a beacon of unity around the entire globe. 412 pastors and leaders trained and empowered. Hailing from a staggering 109 countries, our Global Partners Initiative is a step further in our mission. Each one now launching new institutes, sowing seeds of change in Tanzania, Kenya, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, Pakistan, South Africa, and even in the Ukraine. In every corner of the globe, we are reaching out, touching lives, and making a difference. Hello, I'm I'm Jim Fleming, and I'm the Executive Pastor for Highlands Fellowship. And it's an honor to be with Wahid today. Uh, As many of you know, we do partner with 4G3. Uh, Our G3 graduates have uh, become part of that ministry and we have seven in particular who are now uh, part of the Discipleship Institute uh, that Wahid is uh, actively involved in with us where we're again raising up disciples around the world. So today I thought it would be great if we, we've got Wahid here to kind of talk through that process and also kind of what that looks like and how how that process works. Yeah. Do you want to share that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Mohid Waba, uh, uh, founder of 4G3. Actually, uh, 4G3 was founded in Abingdon with Highlands Fellowship. When you started the G3 uh, ministry, uh, reaching to uh, pastors and leaders all over the world and reached 109 countries coming to Abingdon to be trained uh, in the purpose-driven church uh, paradigm. Uh, this, you know, th- this uh, stirred my heart and uh, 
I started thinking and I consulted with uh, Jim and with uh, Pastor uh, uh, Alan uh, about this and we started this ministry. We wanted to uh, just focus on uh, seven countries and equip them very well in order to start discipleship institutes where they are serving and uh, the discipleship institutes are built on biblical basis so we teach the Bible but e uh, even more we live with people and show them how the Christian life is lived so it's a uh, uh, an in-depth uh, discipleship as, di as Jesus did with his disciples and as Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2 uh, to Timothy, what you heard of me with many witnesses in trust to uh, people who are faithful enough to carry on to other generations and that's what we are doing. We uh, are very privileged to have these pastors. They are, are really good pastors, very well equipped, and uh, we are trying to take them uh, a step uh, further uh, in uh, training their people to be disciples of Jesus. Yeah. And these pastors have all been to our G3 conference in Abingdon, and they're from Pakistan, Ukraine, uh, Tanzania, Kenya, Ivory Coast, um, Nigeria and South Africa and we have another one from uh, Qatar so we're just really blessed to have these incredible leaders be part of this next phase of the G3 which is discipleship institutes around the world so we're, we're excited about that and so honored to partner with Wahid. Dear Highland Fellowship, dear pastors, dear leaders, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Ever since I had the privilege of being invited to G3 conference and especially when the war started, your church has become a reliable support for our church and many needy people. You have become God's grace for us in this difficult and unstable time. For many years we have prayed for revival to come in our country and it happened, but we didn't think that it would be like this. Today, many churches have a problem with free seats because new people have arrived. One of the secrets of the revival was the great activity of the church in volunteering and charity. The attitude towards the church has changed in society. Today, the topic of emotional trauma is very relevant and the church is studying this topic and starting to work with people. Hundreds of Christians also joined the chaplain ministry in the front and in hospitals. Although the war is not over yet, the church is working at full capacity, creating new projects building new premises for serving society. We live in difficult times when the economy is down, prices are rising, missiles are flying every day and there is destruction and death. But we stand and do not give up. God is with us and he will give us victory. We want to thank the Highland Fellowship for the sacrificial generosity you show us. We thank you for standing with us. We are one family and this helps us to do one thing in the name of the gospel. May God bless you abundantly. Keep praying for us and accept our sincere greetings. Greetings from Pakistan in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I would like to share a praise report what the Lord is doing in Islamic Republic of Pakistan. On Easter 2023, we launched our second campus in the city of Lahore, and our launch service was attended by close to 1,000 people. When at the end of the service, I gave the altar call, more than 200 people responded to the altar call and gave their lives to Jesus Christ. Since then, we have been searching for a place where we can hold our services for a second campus but in that neighborhood nobody is willing to 
rent us any facility for church purposes. First, we wasted a few months uh, in search of a rental place, but then we started a small group in a family's yard, which is attended by close to 100 people twice a week. In that small group, we started our discipleship class, and as a result, 73 people were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and publicly declared Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Then back in June, we sent our first evangelism team in the desert part of Pakistan, and they evangelized to more than 100 Hindus one-on-one. -on -one. Then in August, uh, in a nearby city, 21 churches and more than 500 Christian homes have been burned by Muslim extremists. With the help of Highlands Fellowship and other ministry partners, we were able to help 100 families with several household things. We thank God that in the midst of this chaos, God is moving in Pakistan and many people are coming to Christ and growing in their faith every day. I would like to thank all the Highlands Fellowship family for your prayers and for your sacrificial generosity. Please continue to support us with your prayers and with your generosity so we can glorify God by preaching the gospel and bringing many into his kingdom. Thank you and God bless you. So it's pretty incredible when I think about these partners that we have all over the world because of your faithfulness and your generosity that we can partner with and see God move in incredible ways. We talk about this idea when you give above what you normally give, it allows us as a church to go beyond where we normally go. So these are all the things that are connected with our G3 work, but one of our sort of Tanzanian celebrities that we have among us at Highlands is Shelly Altizer. And many of you know Shelly. She was on our first G3 trip to Egypt. And since that time, Shelly leads teams to Tanzania every year. And God has done some amazing work in Tanzania through Shelly. So Shelly, thanks so much for being with us. Can you tell us a little bit about all God's been doing through you in Tanzania and your heart to serve the Tanzanians and, and, and what that's made a difference in you? Sure, thank you. Yep. It's really exciting to be able to share what we see God doing globally and here in our own community. Um, it has just been a blessing. Like um, Highlands Fellowship does here, how we reach out into the community, that's what we started doing in Tanzania. We go to the local churches there, and uh, we, we get pastors who are willing to um, reach out to their own communities, and, and we try to encourage them to find the people in their community who are really making a difference. Their local pastors, their midwives, their teachers, their doctors in the community, and then we ask them to bring those people together and make a team that can make a difference in the community because mission work is wonderful, but we can't be there all the time. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's, it's not just left up to the missionary to do the work. So what we're seeing is these teams are coming together and they are able to really make a difference in their communities. So tell me again how many years you've been on this journey. Um, 17, I believe. <laughs> 17 years, that's crazy. And you have worked in many of the cities in Tanzania. You've been in Dar, the capital. You've been up in Arusha. You've been in Mwanza. And this year you're going to take a team? Yes, I'm going to take a team this year. Um, we're actually going to... Um, the, to go to Tanzania, we're going to go to Dar on June the 11th through the 25th. Okay. And um, we're going to, we're hoping to do a medical mission this year. Mm -hmm. We have um, a few people that have already agreed to go, but we have a little bit of room for others, especially people in the medical profession that want to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. Because um, what we really see is, you know, when we put our medical professionals with our pastors, and we go into the communities, we can meet the spiritual needs and the physical needs of the people. Mm -hmm. And we try to point that out when, when we're on mission. You know, it's, it's not that the pastors are only doing Jesus's work or the physicians are only doing Jesus's work. It's both of them. Jesus was right in the middle. Somebody was hungry. He, uh, he gave them food. Um, he didn't just preach to them. And if they needed uh, that spiritual encouragement, he was there for that. And so we want our pastors and our doctors to work together on the mission field because that's something that is greatly needed in these communities. You, you go there and you've got people who, with sicknesses that 
you know, don't have the ability or the transportation to get to certain places to get the health care that they need. Mm -hmm. And um, when you work with those local communities and you have these people working together, they can get the word out that, you know, there's going to be a group of people on this day that can be here to pray with you as well as take your blood pressure and look at your vital signs mm -hmm. and talk to you about what your ailments are. And so um, this is how we're going to grow the kingdom is by using our doctors as well as our pastors and having them work together. Awesome. Well, Shelly, thank you. I've been uh, to Tanzania many times, but I haven't, I'm, I'm not anywhere in popularity scale like Shelly is. Shelly goes and she has dinner with the president of Tanzania. It's like traveling with Elvis when you're in Tanzania with Shelly. She's an incredible person who has given her heart and soul into that nation. And I mean, Probably thousands of lives have been changed through the efforts that you and your teams have done. I, I do love it. And, and, I, and I want people to know that, you know, you don't have to have a special skill to be able to make a difference there. I'm from this region. I'm from Russell County. <laughs> and, you know, as a little girl, I just remember saying a prayer, God, use me. Yeah. And I think that, you know, if you're sitting there on your couch or you're sitting in a service and you don't know if God can use you, just pray that prayer because he can. Yeah. So a few more openings in the trip this summer, going to Tanzania, just get up with Shelly and we'd love to send you to Tanzania along with her. That would be awesome. So today, uh, could you give Shelly just a quick hand for uh, her efforts in Tanzania? Thanks so much, Shelly, for being here with us. And what we've tried today is just give you a very small glimpse of all the opportunities God has given us to make a difference, not only with our next generation and our communities, but literally around the world. And guys, I just want to say, over the 13 years that I've been at Highlands, you have never disappointed me. You are some of the most generous people I have ever met in my life. You love to give to these kinds of things. So I was thinking about so many of you when we were going through the study in Revelation, you have asked me, Alan, how do I get God's blessing on my life? I want God's blessing on my life. I, I really think if you want God's blessing on your life and you want God's power in your life and you're, you want God's anointing through your life, that the way that that happens is, I think, through three simple areas of our life. He wants us to be men and women of integrity. He wants us to be humble and dependent upon Him. He's God and we're not. And the third thing is, I think He wants us to be generous. He talks more about generosity in the Scripture than He does about love, than He does about heaven. I mean, it's multiple, multiple times more. And why is that? Because... When we talk about generosity, that's really love in action. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. I, I love what the scripture in Proverbs says. In Proverbs 14, 31, it says, Whoever is generous to the needy honors God. You know, uh, these kids who are going to camp, these people that we serve in our community, often these foster children, these people that we serve in third world countries, this is the needy of the world. And when you give, somehow God honors that. He multiplies the gifts that you give back to you, and it allows God's blessing to be on your life. Generosity honors God as a fellow believer. Generosity draws us closer to Him. Generosity makes us more like Jesus. The godly, the Scripture says, we love to give. And God loves a what kind of giver? A cheerful giver. So today, our campus pastors are going to come, and they're going to sort of walk you through the opportunities that we have for you to make a pledge for 2024 in our Difference Maker, or for you to actually give of your resources that God has blessed you with today. And uh, I know that you're going to be generous, and you're going to be gracious. And uh, one thing that I would say to you, Brent and I, we continue to give more each year to the causes of the things of God. Not just because I'm a pastor, because I've seen God bountiful bless us over and over and over. It's true. You just can't outgive God. And we've tried to keep him first and foremost in our finances and our life the whole time we've been married. And God's blessed us. You know, there have been some challenging times. There's been some times when we continue to be faithful, even though income wasn't as, you know, as, as great as it had been in the past. But God has always been faithful. And today I want to invite you. I'm not 
asking you to do something unless it's a joy of you, unless it's something that in your heart you want to be with. If, if, you, if you have the least bit of resistance today about giving, then by all means, don't give. And we've been talking about this for every week that I've been in this Revelation series. So if you've actually prayed about what you would like to give to Difference Maker, then I would say, hey, give that today. But if you have the card and maybe this is your first time with us and you haven't prayed about it, then I don't want you to give today, all right? Because you'll just give because, well, I probably need to give something and, and I want to be a part of that. But I would say don't give. I would encourage you to take your envelope and to go home and to actually say, God, you've given me everything I have. Everything, everything that we possess has come from the generous hand of God. And just ask God, Lord, what would it take for me to actually make a difference with some of the resources that you've given me so that a kid might be able to go to camp, hear about Jesus, have his complete life change. It happened to me. Somebody gave so I could give, that I could go to camp. And at 16 years of age, I gave my heart and life to Jesus, forever changed. I'm, I'm forever grateful to those who gave the generosity. And then I think about loving on our community. Maybe you're here today and you're part of Highlands and you just, you know, you just don't have the resources right now in your life. I understand the economy's tough. Inflation is high. But would you be willing to give some of your time? There's lots of ways you can be generous. And when we think about reaching the world, I wish, you know, that it's, it's, it's interesting that often people think, well, you know, the church, surely you don't need more than you did last year. Well, here's the thing. Everything in our life has gone up, right? I mean, we understand inflation is 18%. And unfortunately, reaching people with the gospel is also more expensive. It costs what we do around the world to see people come to know Jesus Christ. But I think it's the greatest use of our resources that we can possibly do. So I'm inviting you, giving you the opportunity to actually step up and give a sacrificial gift this year to our Difference Maker campaign, to our Difference Maker offering. I trust you'll do that. I trust God will lead you and guide you in the process of doing that. And hey, if you're here today, I know this is a giving message, completely different than normal, but here's the deal. If you're here and you've never trusted Jesus Christ and maybe something has happened or been said and you realize you need Jesus, this, this happens every year. People get saved during this message. And whether you're watching on TV today or you're online and you know that your eternity is not sure, and if you were to die today, you'd go to hell instead of heaven, then I would say God's brought you here to hear what we're doing in Difference Maker so that you could give your life to Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you to pray with me this prayer of salvation right now. Wherever you are, let's pray together. Father, today I know that I need Jesus. God, I think about my life, and even though I don't know you, Lord, you've really blessed me. And God, I have so many things and so many possessions. Today, I recognize all those things have come from your hand. God, not mine. And I know I need you. I've made mistakes in my life. I'm a sinner. And today, Lord, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to save me of my sin. I surrender my life to you, Jesus. If you prayed that prayer, you meant it with your heart. Jesus says you're now part of his family. And so, Lord, today, I, I pray for all of us who have been blessed beyond measure. The rest of the world looks at every one of us here. And if we have a, a home, a shelter over our head, we have a, a vehicle that can get us from place to place. And tonight we'll be able to sit down around a table with some food to nourish our bodies. The rest of the world considers us rich. We're rich. And because of our richness, when we give to the needy, it actually honors the God who has blessed us with everything we have. Thank you for our incredible church. Highlands folks are the most generous people I've ever met in my life. And thank you, God, that not only do we give of our resources, we give of our time and our talents and everything you've blessed us with so that you can use those gifts locally, regionally, and around the world so that people can experience life with Jesus. It's what we're all about. Thank you for what you're going to do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 
I want to thank you so much for being a part of our gathering today, for being a part of Difference Maker Day. It's been exciting to see all that God has done in and through us as he has gone above and beyond what we could even imagine, whether that's with our students, with our kids, with our community, with our world. It is incredible to see all the things that have happened. Hey, and you are a part of that. If you want to contribute to Difference Maker and to continue to see all these things happen as we go above and beyond where we normally go, to see God do exceptionally more than we could even imagine, it's really easy. Uh, you can always go to, of course, your favorite website, the hub, hf.church slash hub, or you can visit hf.church slash difference maker. And on that website, I've got it pulled up right now. You there's videos, information. Uh, you can watch some of those testimony videos. There's some information about how you can give, what your gifts are going toward, and then a link for you to participate with that. You can pledge to give. You can give a one-time gift. You can give a reoccurring gift. Whatever that looks like for you, we would love for you to consider being a part of Difference Maker this year. I hope that you were encouraged by all these stories and challenged. Um, and I know it was good for me to just be reminded uh, in the midst of all kinds of uncertainty that God is faithful, he's with us, he loves us, and he is going before us to prepare a way. So thank you for all of you who contribute, who are a part of our Highlands family. And if you wanna participate right now in Difference Maker, we would love to send that invitation to you. Maybe you're a part of our Highlands family near one of our campuses, or maybe you're on TV or online and you live far away, but you've been impacted by the ministry and messages here at Highlands and you want to participate. We want to give you that opportunity to do that today. So visit hf.church slash difference maker. You can do that right now. And uh, we would love to, to invite you to do that. We're excited to celebrate what God does in this season. We've got tons of great stuff coming up as we enter our Christmas season over the next few weeks. And you don't want to miss next week because we have a special guest speaker that you will find. Uh, I think you'll know exactly who it is when they get up on stage to share. So don't miss next weekend. Have a great one. We'll see you next time.